Okay, welcome back to IBM's Information on Demand live in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Angle Bond's flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise, talk to the thought leaders, get all the data, share that with you. Uh, you can go to siliconangle.com or wikibon.org to get all the footage. And we're, if you want to participate with us, we're rolling out our new innovative crowd-activated innovation application called Crowd Chat. Go to crowdchat.net slash IBM IOD. Just log in with your Twitter handle or your LinkedIn and participate and, and share your voice. It's going to be an on the record transcript of the CUBE conversations. I'm John Furrier with Silicon Angle. I'm with my co host. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Thanks for watching. Anshul Bombri is here. She's the vice president of big data and analytics at, at IBM, many time CUBE guest. Anshul, welcome back. Good to see you again. Thank you. So, we were both uh, down at uh, New York City last week for mm -hmm. the Hadoop World. Um, really amazing to see how that industry has evolved. I mean, you guys, I, I've said a number of times today, and I said this to you before, you've super glued your, your big data or your analytics business to the big data meme mm -hmm. and really created a new category. Mm -hmm. um, I don't mm -hmm. know if that was by design or, you know, or not, but it certainly happened. Certainly by design. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, well, congratulations then, because um, I think that, you know, again, even a year, a year and a half ago, th those two terms, big data and analytics, were sort of separate. Different, you yeah. know, now it's mm -hmm. really considered as, as one, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think because um, initially as people or businesses started getting um, really uh, flooded with big data, right? Dealing with the large volumes, dealing with structured, semi-structured, unstructured data, they were looking at that, you know, how do you store uh, and manage this data in a cost-effective manner? But, uh, you know, if you're just only storing this data, that's useless. Um, and now, ob obviously, it's people realize that they need and there is insights from this data that has to be gleaned, and uh, there's technology that is available to do that. Uh, so, so customers are moving very quickly to that it's not just about cost savings in terms of handling this data, but um, getting insights from it. So, so big data and analytics, uh, you know, is, is becoming, it's, it's becoming synonymous. You know what's interesting to me, Anjul, is, is you know, just following this, this business, it's, all, it's like there's a zillion different nails out there and, mm -hmm. and, and everybody has a hammer and they're, <laughs> they're hitting the nail with their unique hammer, but I've, it's like IBM has a lot of different hammers. Uh -huh. So I wonder if we could talk about that a little bit. Um, You've got a very diverse portfolio. Mm -hmm. You don't try to force one particular solution mm -hmm. on the client. You, mm -hmm. you've, it's sort of an it's depends mm -hmm. sort of answer. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. So um, in the context of big data, when we look at just, let's start with transactional data, right? That continues to be uh, the number one source uh, where there is very valuable insights to be gleaned from it. Uh, so the volumes are growing that, you know, we have retailers that are uh, handling now 2.5 million transactions per hour, right? Telco industry handling 10 billion call data detail records every day. So when you look at the, that level, that volume of transactions, obviously you need to be, you need engines that can handle that, that can process, analyze, and gain insights from it that you can get, you can do ad hoc analytics on this, run queries, and get information out of this at the same speed at which this data is getting generated. So, you know, we, we announced uh, uh, the blue acceleration, right, which is our uh, in-memory column store, uh, which gives you the power to handle these kinds of volumes and be able to really query and get value out of this very quickly. So, but now when you look at, uh, you know, you go beyond the structured data or beyond transactional data, that is semi-structured, unstructured data, that's where, which is still data at rest, is where, uh, you know, we have big insights, which leverages uh, Apache Hadoop, open source, uh, but we've built lots of capabilities on top of that where um, we get, we give the customers the best of open source plus at the same time the ability to analyze this data 
Uh, so, um, you know, we have text analytics capabilities, we provide machine learning algorithms, uh, we have provided integration with uh, that that customers can do predictive modeling on this data using SPSS, using uh, open source uh, languages like R. Um, and uh, in terms of visualization, they can visualize this data using Cognos. Uh, they can visualize this data using uh, MicroStrategy. So uh, we are giving customers, like you said, it's not just, you know, there's one hammer. Mm. and they have to use that for every nail. Uh, the other aspect has been around real time. And we heard that a lot at Strata, right? right. In the, like I've been going to Strata since the beginning and uh, those, uh, that time, even though we were talking about real time, but nobody else no, was. No, it's true, nobody was talking nobody about was it. Talking. So back in the Hadoop world days, it was yeah. just one big, you know, batch job. Yeah. So, but and real time is now the hotbed of the conversation. Absolutely. You know, you're talking about Storm, these new uh -huh. technologies coming mm -hmm. out with, uh, and what Yarn has done has been interesting. Yeah. Um, you seeing the same thing? Yeah, so, so and, and of course, you know, we have a very mature technology in that space, uh, you know, Infosphere Streams for uh, real time uh, analytics has been around for a long time. Uh, it was, um, you know, developed initially for the US government. And uh, so we've been, uh, uh, you know, in this space for more than anybody else. And we, s we have deployments in the telco space where, you know, these tens of billions of call detail records are being processed, analyzed in real time. And, uh, uh, you know, these telcos are using it to predict customer churn, to prevent customer churn, uh, gaining all kinds of insights at an extremely high, uh, you know, very low latency. Uh, so, so it's good to see that, uh, uh, you know, other um, uh, companies are recognizing the, the need for it and uh, are, uh, you know, bringing other offerings uh, out in this space. Yeah, so as we were talking before, somebody says, oh, I want to go, you know, low latency and I want to use Spark. You say, okay, no problem. We, we, we could do that. And, and Streams is interesting because if I understand it, you're, you're basically acting on the data, producing analytics prior to persisting uh -huh. the data. Uh -huh. um, so it's and all in memory. So it's all in yeah. memory. And, but it, yet at the same time, is it uh, my question is, is it evolving where you now can blend that sort of real-time yeah. activity mm -hmm. with maybe some, some batch data mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. and talk about how that's evolving? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so um, streams is for for, um, you know, where as data is coming in, it can be processed, filtered, um, patterns can be seen in streams of data by correlating, connecting different streams of data. And based on uh, certain events occurring, actions can be taken. Now, it is possible that, you know, all of this data doesn't need to be persisted, but there may be some aspects or some attributes of this data that need to be persisted. You could persist this data in a database. That is, use it as a way to populate your warehouse. Uh, you could persist it in a Hadoop-based offering like Big Insights, uh, where you can you know, bring in other kinds of data and enrich the data. It's, it's like data learns from data and a different picture emerges, Jeff right? Jeff Jonas' puzzle yes, analogy, yeah. Right, so that's, uh, that, that's very valid. And uh, so, um, so when we look at the real time, it is about taking action in real time, but there is uh, data that can be persisted from that in both the warehouse as well as in something like Big Insights Hadoop. I want to throw a term at you and, to, and see what, <laughs> what, what this means to you. We've been actually doing some crowd chats with, with IBM on this topic. Uh -huh. Data economy. I was going to ask the same oh, question. Yeah, no, no, I was going to ask you the asked same. It. No, 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 go ahead. No, no. So, so data economy. What, what so does what data is, economy mean to you? What, okay. what are customers you know, uh, uh, doing with the data economy? <laughs> okay, so, so my take on this is that uh, we, there, are, there are two aspects of this. One is that the cost of storing the data and analyzing the data, processing the data, has gone down substantially. The, but the value in this data, because you can now process, analyze uh, petabytes of this data, 
you can bring in not just structured but semi-structured, unstructured data. You can uh, glean information um, from different types of data and a different picture emerges. So the value that is in this data has gone up substantially. Right? Previously, a lot of uh, this data was probably discarded people, without people knowing that there is useful information in this. So to the business, the value in the data has gone up. What they can do with this data in terms of making business decisions, in terms of uh, uh, you know, making their customers and consumers more satisfied, giving them the right products and services, uh, and how they can monetize that data has gone up. But the cost of storing and analyzing and processing has gone down, which, which I think is fantastic, right? So it's a huge win-win for businesses. It's a huge win-win for the consumers because they are getting now products and services uh, from uh, you know, the businesses which they were not before. So that, that to me is the economy of data. So this is why, John, I think IBM is really going to kill it in this, in this business because they've got such a huge portfolio. They've got, um, if you look at where IOD has evolved, mm -hmm. data management, information management, data governance, all the stuff on privacy, mm -hmm. security, mm -hmm. these were all cost items before. People yeah. looked at them, ah, yeah. no, i, I got to deal with all this data. And now uh -huh. it's, there's been a bit flip, uh -huh. and IBM is just in this wonderful position to take it advantage mm -hmm. of it. Of course, mm -hmm. Ginny's trying to turn the you know, the, the battleship <laughs> and trying to get everybody aligned. And, uh -huh. But the, the moons and stars are aligning, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. really there's a, there's a tailwind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have a question on, me, sorry, we have a question on yeah. Twitter from uh, Jim Lundy, uh, analyst, uh, former Gartner analyst, has his own firm now. Uh, shout out to Jim. Jim, thanks for, uh, for watching, as always. I know you're a Cube, Cube alum and also an uh, avid watcher uh, and now a loyal member of the CrowdChat community. Uh, the question is, blue acceleration is, helps drive more data into actionable analytics and dashboards. Mm -hmm. Can IBM drive new, more new deals with it? Absolutely. So can you go into detail? Well, uh -huh. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes. Yes. Um, yes. And can you uh, elaborate on that for Jim? Yeah. I, I, you know, with, with blue acceleration, you know, we have had customers that have uh, uh, evaluated blue and uh, against uh, SAP HANA and uh, have found that what Blue can provide is, uh, is way ahead of what uh, SAP HANA can provide. So we have a number of accounts where you know, people are going with the performance, the throughput, you know, what Blue provides is, is uh, very unique and it's way ahead of what anybody else has in the market. Including so, SAP. Including SAP, and uh, and uh, you know, it's ultimately it's value to the business, right? And that's what we are trying to do. That how do we get our customers the right technology so that they can deal with all of this data, get their arms around it, get value from this data quickly. I so mean, that's that's really of uh, a sense here. So, so I wonder if, if part of Jim's question is 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 yes, it's driving new deals for sure, <laughs> new product, new deals. New product. Can it drive new footprints? Is that may maybe what he's he's asking? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. In other words, you, these traditional IBM accounts are doing doing deals. Are, are you able to drive new new footprints? Yeah, yeah. We uh, you know there are there are customers that you know I'm not going to take any names here, but which have come to us which are new to IBM, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a it's that to us, and that's happening. That's net new business. That's net, net new business, and that's happening with us uh, for all our big data offerings, because you know the richness that is there in the portfolio, uh, it's not that we have, like you were saying, Dave, it's not that we have one hammer and we are going to use it for every nail that is out there. Um, you know, As people are looking at blue, big insights for Hadoop, streams for real time, and all, with all this comes the whole lifecycle management and governance, right? So security, privacy, all those things don't, don't go away. So all the stuff that was relevant for the relational data, now we are able to bring that to big data very quickly. And which is, I think, of huge value to customers. And as people are moving very quickly in this big data space, there's nobody else who can just bring all of these assets together from and, and you know, provide an integrated Platform. What use cases, to Jim's point, I know, you know, I know you don't want to name names, but can you name, can you talk about some use cases that, that these customers are using with Blue? Like what use cases are, in, uh, are they solving? Um, so, 
you know, I, I um, from, uh, from a use case standpoint, it is really like, um, uh, you know, people are seeing performance, which is, you know, 30, 32 times faster than what they had seen when they were not using uh, an in-memory column store. Uh, you know, so 8 to 25, 32 times performance gains is, is uh, you know, something that is huge and is getting more and more people attracted to this. So, so, so let's, let's take an industry. Take financial services, for mm -hmm. example. So the big, the big ones in financial services are a risk. Mm -hmm. People want to know, you know, are they a credit risk? Yeah. There's obviously marketing, mm -hmm. serving, up, mm -hmm. serving up ads. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, f fraud detection, mm -hmm. you would think is another one that mm -hmm. in more real time, are yeah. these, are these, you know, these some would things be the, that you're working on? These would on be or? the segments, and uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, retail, uh, where uh, again, uh, you know, there is, like I was saying, right, that the number of transactions that are being handled is, is growing phenomenally. Uh, I gave one example, which was around 2.5 million transactions per hour, which was unheard of before. And the information that has to be gleaned from it, which is you know, to leverage this to, for demand forecasting, uh, to leverage this for gaining insights in terms of giving the customers the right kind of coupons, to make sure that those coupons are getting, uh, uh, you know, are being used. So it was, you know, before the world used to be, you get the coupons in your, email, in your mail. Then the, the world changed to that you get coupons after you've done the transaction. Now, where we are seeing customers is that when the customer walks in the store, that's where they get the coupons based on which aisle they are in. Uh, so it's a combination of the transactional data, the location data, right? And we are able to bring all of this together. So, so it's blue combined with you know, what things like streams and big insights can do that makes the use cases even more powerful and unique. So I like this new format of the, of the crowd chat. Normally it's a one hour <laughs> crowd chat where it's kind of like thought leaders just going and pounding away, but this is more like Reddit AMA, um, but you know, much better. Uh, question coming in from Grant Case is, uh, one of the themes to you is one of the themes we've heard about in the keynote was the lack of analytical talent. What is going on to contribute more value for mm -hmm. an organization skilling up the workforce or implementing better software tools for knowledge workers? Mm -hmm. So, um, in term, so skills is definitely an issue that uh, has uh, been a been a challenge in the in the industry with, uh, and it got uh, pretty compound with big data and the new technologies coming in. Uh, from the standpoint of uh, you know what we are doing for uh, the data scientists, which is uh, you know the people who are leveraging data um, to to gain new insights, to explore and 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 discover what other attributes they should be adding to their predictive models to improve uh, the accuracy of those models. Uh, so there is um, there's uh, a very rich uh, set of tools which are used for exploration and discovery. Uh, so we have, um, which is both from uh, you know Cognos has such pro uh, such such capabilities. Uh, we have such capabilities with our data explorer. So, as a way so basically, tooling for the predictive on the modeling. So, so right now, the efforts on the modeling and, and the, for the predictive and, analytics. And descriptive analytics, right? I mean, there's a lot of, uh, when you look at that, when there's petabytes of data, before people even get to predictive, there's a lot of value to be gleaned from descriptive analytics. And being able to do it at scale, at petabytes of data, was difficult before. And, and now that's possible with, Extra, excellent visualization, right? So that it's it's taking things to that it the analytics is becoming interactive. It's not just that you know you 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 are able to do this in real time. Ask the questions, get the right answers, because the the models running on petabytes of data and the results coming from that is now possible. So, so interactive analytics is where this is going. So, so another question is, uh, Jim was asking, I was wondering, IBM's going around doing blue accelerator upgrades with all its existing clients. Loan origination is a no-brainer upgrade. I don't even know what Yeah, so that was the kind of follow-up that I had asked. Is it new accounts, is it new footprint, or is it just sort of you know, it, it is extending, uh, existing? Right? It's, it's both, it's both. It's both. How, what is the characteristic of a, 
of a company that is successfully, or characteristics of a company that is successfully leveraging data? Can Big we talk data? about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, companies are thinking about now that you know, their existing EDW, which is their enterprise data warehouse, needs to be expanded. Uh, so, um, you know, before, if they were only dealing with warehouses which were handling just uh, structured data, they are augmenting that. So this is from a technology standpoint, right? They are augmenting that and building their logical data warehouse, which takes care of not just the structured data, but also semi-structured and unstructured data, bringing, augmenting the warehouses with Hadoop-based offerings like Big Insights, with real-time offerings like Streams, so that from an IT standpoint, they are ready to deal with all kinds of data and be able to analyze and gain information from all kinds of data. Now, from the standpoint of you know, how do you start the big data journey, um, it, the, the platform that at least you know, we provide is a plug and play. So there are different starting points for, for businesses. Uh, they may have started with warehouses. They bring in a polystructured store with Big Insights slash Hadoop. They are building social profiles uh, from social and public data, which was not being done before, matching that with the enterprise uh, data, which may be in CRM systems, master data management systems inside the enterprise, and which creates quadrillions of comparisons, and they are gaining more insights about the customer uh, based on master data management, based on social profiles that they are building. So, so this is one big trend that we are seeing. Um, but you know, to take this journey, they have to uh, you know, take smaller, smaller bites, <laughs> digest that, get value out of it, and uh, you know, eat it in chunks rather than try to you know, eat the whole pie <laughs> uh, in, in one chunk. So a um, lot of companies starting with exploration, proof of concepts, uh, implementing certain use cases in four to six weeks, getting value, and then continuing to add more and more data sources and more and more uh, applications. So there are those who would say those existing EDWs, many people, not many, uh -huh. some people would say they, sh they should be retired. You would disagree with that? No, no, no. I, said, yeah, right? I, I, I think we very much need that experience and expertise. Businesses need that experience and expertise because uh, it's not an either or. It's not that that goes away and there comes a different kind of a, a warehouse. It's an evolution. Right. But there's a tension there, wouldn't you say? There's an organizational tension between the sort of newbies and the existing you know, EDW uh, crowd? I would say that maybe um, you know, three years ago, that was, there was a little bit of that. But uh, there is, um, I, I mean, I talk to a lot of customers, and there is, uh, I don't see that anymore. So, people, so people, are, people are, you know, they, they understand, they know what's happening, they are moving with the times, and they know that uh, this evolution is where the market is going, where the business is going, and where the technology is going. They know they're going to be made obsolete if they don't embrace it, right? Yeah, so I, there may I, be some I think, holdouts, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so as we get on time, I want to ask you a personal question. What's going on with you these days with, uh, within IBM? Obviously, you're in a hot area. You were just in New York last week. Tell us what's going on in your life these days. I mean, things going well? I mean, yeah. what are things you're looking at? What are you paying attention to? What's on your radar when you wake mm -hmm. up and, and, uh, <laughs> and, and get, get to work, before you get to work? What, what, are you, what's, what are you thinking about? What's the big picture? So, so uh, obviously, you know, big data has been very fascinating, right? Lots of, uh, um, lots of different kinds of applications in different industries. Uh, so working with the customers in uh, telco, in healthcare, banking, financial sector has been uh, very educational, right? Uh, so a lot of learning, and that's uh, very exciting. Um, and what's on my radar is um, we are uh, obviously now seeing that uh, we've done a lot of work in terms of helping customers uh, develop and their big data platform on-premise. Um, now we are seeing more and more a trend where people want to put this on the cloud. Uh, so, so that's uh, something that we have now a lot of, I mean, it's not like we haven't paid attention to the cloud, but uh, you know, in, the, in the coming months, you are going to see more 
uh, from us uh, where you know how do we build how do we help customers build uh, both private and 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 public cloud offerings uh, and and you know where they can provide analytics as a service to different lines of business by setting up the cloud so so cloud is certainly on my mind well, the uh, software acquisition was is, big. I mean, that was yes. there was a hole in the portfolio, mm -hmm. and that filled it. You, know, and you guys got to drive that hard. So, obviously. so both software and then, of course, uh, OpenStack, right? Uh, from an infrastructure standpoint, right. for what's happening in the open source. Uh, so we are, uh, you know, leveraging both of those. And like I said, you'll hear more about that. Uh, well, OpenStack is key, as I see it, for you guys, because you have you have street cred when it comes mm -hmm. to open source. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. what you did in, in, in Linux, and mm -hmm. you made a you know, great business out yeah. of that. So um, everybody will point at, you know, whether it's Oracle or IBM and HP, say, oh, they just want to sell us our stack. You, yeah. You've got to demonstrate uh, yeah. that, that you're open, and OpenStack uh -huh. is a great way to do that, and other initiatives yeah. as well. So yeah. like I say, I think so you've got So we're excited about there. that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Hi, right, Jules, well, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It's always a pleasure to, Thank you. to see you. Yeah, and, uh, same here. Great having you back. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, we'll be right back live here inside theCUBE here in IBM, on, uh, IBM Information On Demand. Hashtag IBM IOD. Go to crowdchat.net slash IBM IOD and join the conversation where we're going to have a on the record crowd chat conversation with the folks out there who aren't here on site or on site. Uh, we're, it's, we're here live in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.